somewhere in space. This may all be happening right now. Hello! Yo! And welcome to another episode of Project Helium Tears. Flipping it, we've been busy over the last couple of weeks, but we've got a couple of really big announcements to share with you. Drum roll. We have a launch date. <laughs> uh, Wednesday the uh, sorry Tuesday the 21st Wednesday the 22nd of April 2015 we are hopefully going to be launching from Cambridge uh, those nice chaps over at Cambridge University Space Flight so the students at the university uh, have a three-day notice to airmen uh, from the Civil Aviation Authority uh, so we basically only need three days to, to give them a call in advance to say, can we launch? Uh, that's so much better than the 30-day the uh, window that we could ask the CAA for directly for, for launching from wherever else. They don't do it for everyone. Um, they do it if you like, if they think you're doing a good job, and they think hopefully that we've, we're doing a fairly good job, and they're doing it because they're thoroughly decent people. So guys at CUSF, thank you so much for letting us launch from there. But yes, we have a launch date. Brilliant. So, uh, the other big announcement we've got is uh, the competition that Awesome Astronomy run, the Take Me to Space competition, so you can have your name on the side of our payload. Uh, they drew for it, and we have a winner, uh, and it's a guy by the name of Matthew Hodgson. Well done, Matt. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Um, also, uh, one of the really cool things, uh, we were chatting to the Awesome Astronomy guys, and we've decided that everyone that tweeted the competition, um, your name's going to go on there as well. Um, be a little bit smaller than the winner, but you're all going up with it. To say thanks for supporting us, you also are coming with us on our journey into space. Exactly, exactly. Um, what else have we done, Matt? Ah, oh, man, we've been so busy. Um, I finally got the pie working, or well, the pie in the sky working. Um, we've built the, the we've done a whole test build of the rig itself, um, of the payload train, so everything from the rig all the way out to the to the balloon. The payload is just beautiful. It's a work of art. Um, what started out as an uh, ordinary polystyrene box has now got cameras, GPS and colour. Um, we started out with the basic polystyrene, uh, we cut slots in it for the cameras so the GoPros fit in nicely. Um, you've got a lovely wide angle view which we cut with soldering irons. Um, all the kit fits inside, um, you've got GPS on the top of it. Um, we wanted to protect it and make it look distinctive as well um, so we can find it. Um, we found out that if you spray paint polystyrene it pretty much dissolves it so coated it in a layer of PVA glue which protected it and it's got a lovely bright orange uh, car paint layer on it and it's got uh, lacquer on top of that to protect it even more it's a lovely solid surface now um, and thanks to the guys at Limark that sent us some uh, complimentary tape not only does it now have uh, fluorescent tripes so we can find it during the day it now glows in the dark yeah, well, you've trommed the payload. I certainly did. <laughs> um, it's also got a carbon fibre arm, uh, which is going to be carrying our Pi camera, which will be showing the competition winner's name. Um, it, yeah, uh, it's also got livery on it, so that uh, people can know that it's not dangerous, and there's some numbers to call if they find it. Um, it's got a smiley face for when it crashes through their greenhouse, uh, and it also has a Union Jack in case we invade, invade another country. Uh, we, we don't want to do that. Um, but this has got some really important techie guts in it, hasn't it? Yes, um, the Pi. Uh, last time last time we made the vlog, I was struggling to get it going. I thought the Pi in the Sky module was going to just work right out of the box and it was going to give us pictures, it was going to give us telemetry, give us speed and height and everything. Um, it turns out you do need uh, just a little bit of, of Linux knowledge to, to, to make it work properly. Um, if you've only ever used Windows, if you ever, then I wouldn't necessarily jump straight in and buy it. Buy yourself a Linux for Dummies book. You don't have to know a lot, but just enough to, to tinker. Um, and, and you know what, that actually makes it more rewarding, is, is um, just learning about something and make it, make it come alive. I've, I've had, I feel like I've had a relationship with this thing of just swearing at it so much and then getting it to do what I want. Oh it's yeah, just been, he's been swearing at it. <laughs> it's, it's been really rewarding. It's a wonderful, wonderful little bit of kit. Well done to Dave Ackerman for, for making it available to the public and thank you for uh, answering my, my tweets when I've tweeted you to ask for help. I appreciate, I must look like an idiot sometimes, but thank you, we're going and hopefully we'll be taking it into space. <laughs> So, I've set Matt a challenge. Can he explain to you, the viewers, and me, what exactly our Pi is going to do 
in 60 seconds. You up for that? I'll give it a try. So I'll give you a countdown. You ready? Go on then. Three, two, one. The Pi in the Sky module fits on top of a standard Raspberry Pi. The uh, Pi in the Sky module takes in the uh, GPS module which lets you know where you are, um, how high up you are, how fast you're going. It also has a temperature, pre uh, temperature and pressure sensor to tell you the temperature and pressure of the atmosphere. You can also put a Raspberry Pi camera in it to take pictures of the, the uh, competition. Uh, that Pi module connects you to a little FM transmitter transmitting on the ISM, Industrial Scientific and Medical Frequency. Two frequencies uh, come down through the airwaves. Uh, go to the aerial that's connected to your laptop. The aerial takes those frequencies, turns them into two tones via the FunCube dongle. The FunCube dongle uh, connects, uh, appears in SD, the SDR Sharp software. The SDR Sharp software um, goes into the DLFL Digi software and, D, uh, and turns those two tones into your telemetry and your pictures. Those telemetry and pictures connect from your, the Wi-Fi on your laptop to your mobile phone, uh, which is connected to the internet and uploads that data to the internet so everyone can see it. Oh, one minute. One minute exactly. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Well oh, done. and also the uh, there is also a bunch of other geeks in the uh, high energy balloon community who will download it and put it on the internet as well. Hopefully, that's a penalty point. As that penalty yeah. point. That's an extra five seconds. <laughs> so, in layman's terms, uh, our little flight computer that Matt has built um, is going to show us where it's been, how high it's been, where it is, what temperature it's been, what speed it reached. It's going to help us find it. It's going to send back some wonderful live pictures, um, which you're going to be able to watch on uh, awesomeastrology.com forward slash HET. And there's a couple of other links posted for you where you can look as well. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're really coming with us. You're going to be able to get live pictures from space. One of the other cool things that we did, we actually did a full uh, test build of the payload train. Um, so that's basically the whole vehicle, if you will, from payload connection to parachute, connection from parachute to balloon. Um, and it's absolutely enormous. <laughs> <laughs> payload is connected to this utterly enormous, how long is it Matt? 10 meters. 10 meters of string, which is connected to da -ding, our parachute. That's not the final connection by the way. What's that again? That's the parachute line spacer, so the parachute opens. And there's the chute. And then we go off for another five metres or so. Yep. Until we finally culminate in our mighty balloon! Not to scale. <laughs> so, um, we are about 95% of the way through, I reckon. Um, something I read the other day was that uh, when the balloon bursts, because there's no air up there, um, the balloon is the size of a house, when it bursts it punches down the line uh, so quickly that the balloon is shaken so violently and tumbles so violently until the parachute opens that the cameras inside are, are prone to get ripped out or, or whatever's inside gets prone to get thrown around. So we were doing some testing today with the cameras inside the box with our current connections. Um, we actually failed at that, so, so um, we need to go back to the, uh, not back to the drawing board, but we need to nail that before launch. But that's, um, that's the kind of, kind of little niggly jobs that we're doing at the moment. It's just, it's just finding out that last few, last few bits before launch. But then, um, yes, hopefully, come, uh, come the day, we'll be good to go. Yeah, um, this is the kind of stuff we've been doing. Little, little niggly stuff, because we want this to be perfect. Um, more importantly, we want it to actually work. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, since the beginning of this, we are but a couple of <laughs> wits from wrong <laughs> trying to have a space program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, um, that's about it from us. And on the 21st or 22nd of April, come with us on our journey to space. Uh, weather permitting. If not, it'll be uh, maybe a couple of days afterwards. Bye bye! <laughs> <laughs>